five Canadians will experience some form of mental illness in their lifetime, and two-thirds of these people will only see their family doctor for help. That's incredible. Yeah. And our health specialist, Leah Sarich, now with how the use of one form of medication for mental illness has actually skyrocketed. It has. So this is some extraordinary research that's come out of the University of Calgary. Dr. Tamara Pringsheim, she's a psychiatrist at the UFC, and her team of researchers, they basically looked at the use of antipsychotics. So these are medicines that are used to treat schizophrenia. They looked at the use in Canada between 2005 and 2012. And what they found is staggering, a 300% increase in use over that time period, 300%. So this prescribing is primarily being done by family doctors for off-label use, so not what that medication is indicated for. So when this is an antipsychotic, it's mainly used, as I said, for the treatment of schizophrenia. We're looking at a jump from 1 million prescriptions in 2005 to 4 million wow. in 2012. So family docs are prescribing this medication for depression. Now it is indicated for that, but only after all other standard therapies have, used, have been tried and have failed. So it's also being prescribed for things like anxiety and sleep problems. And again, not what the medication is approved for. And Dr. Pringsheim says, you know, most people with depression will actually respond to the first or second antidepressant that they're given, so that this medication doesn't necessarily need to be used for that. But the main concern here is that this medication has very serious side effects. The second generation antipsychotics like ketiapine carry a real risk of severe metabolic side effects. And what that means is weight gain, and not just a small amount of weight gain, it can be a dramatic weight gain. And with that weight gain comes problems with cholesterol, triglycerides, and the development of type 2 diabetes. So. Um, uh, because of that, we are very concerned. Uh, Ketiapine also uh, uncommonly can cause what we call extrapyramidal uh, side effects. So it can affect the way people move and cause movement disorders. So the use of ketiapine uh, really needs to be very carefully monitored. So this is major. Those are very serious side effects. And Dr. Pringsheim says research shows that most people are not being monitored in the way they need to be on these medications. So these patients do need to have their blood glucose monitored, their diabetes in check, they need to have their weight watched, their cholesterol, things like that. Those things all need to be tracked if you're on this medication, and that's just not happening. And those serious side effects are even happening at very low doses of this medication. So this is pretty serious. So this monitoring is just not happening. But the big picture here is that family doctors who mean so well, you know, they've got a patient sitting in front of them who's suffering, and they want to help, but they don't have the information they need when it comes to these medications nor do they have the time to explain that risk-benefit ratio, the risks and benefits of taking this medication. So this brings up a major problem when it comes to treating mental health issues. This increase in prescribing really points to uh, a, a health system flaw, a health system problem, that we don't have adequate resources for people. Um, one of the uh, if, if, a, if someone has an inadequate response to an antidepressant, uh, one of the adjunctive treatments that is recommended is psychotherapy, right? Which makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, that people need to learn how to self-manage and how to change the way they think and see the world, right? And that can, that can be a cure, right? Uh, but accessing these therapies can be difficult. It sure can be difficult. So we're talking things like a cure, as Dr. Pringsheim mentioned, if they could just get access to those therapies. So that's a major problem with our healthcare system. So the bottom line here is that these medications need to be used more discriminately. So they're good, but they need to be used more carefully. That said, if you're on an antipsychotic medication and you're watching this story, we want to be very clear, do not take yourself off this medication. Make sure you talk to your doctor about what you want to do and how you want to proceed, because these are very powerful meds that you can't stop abruptly. Also, something to think about is make sure that you advocate for yourself with your doctor, your family doctor, and say, you know, I've heard that I'm on this medication and that I should be monitored properly. Can we check my weight? Can we check my cholesterol? Can we follow me for diabetes? Things like that. So it's important to advocate for yourself. And then it's also really useful to talk to your doctor about accessing some psychotherapy as well. So, of course, lots of information here, but it's yeah. all on my blog. Okay, on the blog and breakfasttelevision.ca is where you can find it. Thanks you very much, Leah. You're fascinating, welcome. fascinating topic. Uh, Kristen Hallett on location this morning at.